Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the red corner, would you please welcome all the way from Lithuania, Antanas Jasbutis. So Antanas Jasbutis making his way to his, the cage. 11 wins, 14 losses, and it's fair to say, Pierre, he's fought most of the big names in UK MMA, including Robbie Olivier and Brad Pickett. But it's also true to say that when it comes up to that standard, he, he's lost to them. And at the moment, he's lost his last three on the spin. So we've got a young man here, 29 years of age, in desperate need of a win to change that around. And that has to be playing in the back of his mind. And he's going to want to come out here and he wants to show the Bama fans, you know, I want this fight. And so expect for him to go from zero to 100 in about 15 to 20 seconds. That's right. As I said, when you look at his record, um, there is more losses than wins. But it is a who's who of UK MMA. And when you mention Olivier and Pickett, they're big names. You must learn from defeats from guys like that, surely. Well, any good fighter is. And he's coming out of a very good camp. And they're going to do all the things, they're going to do their homework, and they're going to try to correct any mistakes that he's made in previous fights. And they're also going to scout out his opponent. So uh, I'm very confident that they know a lot about his opponent tonight, and they've got a solid game plan for Jess Butis to go out and perform here. Win or lose, though, the guy is always an entertaining fighter to watch. And now, making his way to the blue corner from Luton, England, Dale Hurricane Right, making his way to the cage, Dale Hardiman from the Storm Gym in Luton. My old mate Amir Shabasik there, and he breeds them tough, let me tell you. And last time out, we saw him here at Bama 7 with an impressive win against Scott Janssen when Janssen was back on a roll. Janssen was on a winning roll. We thought, yep, he's on his way back. And Dale Hardiman stopped him in his tracks there with a really impressive submission win. And he's had only one loss in his last six fights. So this man is on a real roll now. Malcolm, I think the funny thing is, this guy comes from a very savvy striking gym. However, most of his wins have come way, by way of submissions. So it'll be interesting to see what type of game plan he has here tonight. Is he gonna stand and strike? Or is he gonna go down to the ground and execute some more of those slick submissions that he's become well known for. Well, you mentioned that stand-up background. His coach, Amir Sebastian, is here tonight in his corner. Very, very devastating Thai boxer in his day. And again, like a lot of the Thai boxing camps have evolved into the MMA very successfully as well. Now, this fight has the ability to be the dark horse of the evening, maybe even fight of the night. Both guys are on form, Malcolm. Don't look for a slow start. Look for these guys to come out running from the word go. Well, as you said, Jazz Butis, very exciting fighter, but also... Thank so you, ladies and gentlemen. GoDaddy.com and Lonsdale in association with Bama 9 present for your entertainment a lightweight contest featuring three five-minute rounds of MMA action. Our referee in charge of this bout is Mr. Mark Goddard. Firstly, out of the red corner on my left, introducing from Lithuania, a man who brings to the ring a record of 11 victories with 14 defeats. His official weight for the contest, 153 pounds, two ounces. 
ladies and gentlemen, introducing Antanas Jasboutis. And across the ring stands his opponent. His official weight for this bout is 155 pounds, four ounces. His fight record reads 10 visits to the cage, eight victories, all of which have finished inside the scheduled distance with just two defeats on his record. Ladies and gentlemen, from Luton, England, introducing Dale Hurricane Hardiman. A lightweight contest, three five minute rounds of MMA action. I'm very excited for this one. Well, as you said, two very exciting fighters. But uh, for me, it's about that, that mental game as well. You've got a, a fighter that doesn't know how to lose at the moment against a fighter that hasn't got a win as well. So there's all that going on, as well as the physical stuff here. Now, Hardiman in the Black Storm gym is in the southpaw stance. But with a, st a southpaw, you have to keep... It. I repeat. <laughs> Maybe I've had too many hits to my head. He's in an orthodox stance. Yes, both men feeling their way into this one as well. Very light on their feet. And you can see the cogs in the, the head of Hardiman. He's working for something. He's thinking about something. Um, I'm just waiting to see that explode. He's walking his man down. As you said, you can almost see the brain working there. And I think we'll see a little setup and then a takedown attempt from Hardiman. Jazz Butis is showing a lot of shapes on the stand up. Uh, nice footwork, bobbing and weaving of the head, little flinches here and there. Ooh, big shots by both fighters, none really connected clean. Just as I say that, Hardiman lands with a stiff jab. Nice rib kick as well. Overhand right by Jazz Butis lands cleanly. And when you, when you talked about Jazz Boot as, as such an exciting fighter, you hope that after three losses in a row, that caution doesn't get the better of you, that it doesn't stop your natural game flowing, the things that actually worked for you, and you, you don't hold those back for fear of, of being submitted or for fear of making a mistake, which must start to play on your mind. You start questioning, what did I do wrong? And again, that may slow down the whole process or his whole game plan, the things, like you said, that he's really good at. Uh, but so far, saying that, the punches are coming out nice and crisp from both fighters. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem here tonight for Jazz Buses. Hardiman continuing to walk him down, but nice forward movement there by Jazz Budis, almost at a knee for his troubles there. And Hardiman quickly in as Jazz Budis hits the floor. Now Hardiman decides to take a back step, leg control, looking possibly to pass this. Splitting the legs. But he has to be careful that, you know, that an up kick doesn't come up. Straight right to the body of Jess Butis. Hardiman keeping the head way back. Make it work, guys. Come on, do something. You hear the ref asking for action because if there's no action, he will stand Jess Butis back up. Yes, and as you said that, Pierre, he does bring them back up. Good call there by the ref. A good low kick from Hardiman as Jess Butis came in to use his hands again. Now you're starting to see some reddening in the abdomen area of Jess Butis now. I can't tell if that was from the punches of Hardiman or whether it was that scorching leg kick earlier in the first. I imagine it was that right roundhouse to the midsection. And again, another low kick there from Hardiman as they come in. Now Hardiman threw that as Jess Butis was advancing, so it looked more like a knee kick. And those, you don't want to take too many of those to the rib cage. Spinning back kick by Jazz Butis. Sharp just off the target. Shows he's still very dangerous. And I like the way he turns that defense into attack. Hardiman walks him down, then he suddenly explodes forward and takes the initiative away from his opponent. Now, the heaviest shots of the match 
uh, by Jess Butis have been lead off double jab overhand over the top, and he's landed that cleanly twice. I think he's got a thumb in the eye or a finger in the eye. All time, all time, all time. Now, no Hardeman. Hardeman, that's totally unintentional. Neither one of these guys are that type of fighter. Oh, stay over there for me. Stay away from your corner. Look at me. Look at me. Can you see? Look in your eye. Can you see? And Thomas, can you see? Now, look at Hardeman. He's just casually walking back and forth, taking a look out into the crowd. Uh, I mean, this guy personifies a mixed martial arts fighter. That's right, so then you very, very tough see, training guys, come on, down, ready, in, come on, in the Storm Gym. He will be superbly fit. Well, you know what they say, the old adage is, you train hard, fight easy. So one minute left of, of this round. It's been an intriguing round. Not much between the two men. Now, Hardeman has been the aggressor throughout most of the bout, walking Jez Butis down. Um, landing the leg kicks as well as the kicks to the body. Ooh, jumping leg kick. And that's Butis trying to steal the round here in the closing seconds. Well, that's what he does well is he suddenly turns that defense into attack and explodes forward when you've got in the habit of walking him down. He breaks that rhythm very cleverly. Now, how do you score this, Malcolm? It's hard for me to say. Again, an overhand. Big knee there by Hardeman in I think, response. I think in terms of sheer power and aggression, that might be the sole difference between the two men. I would err in favor of Hardeman with the, those big roundhouses, those big knees. And it's, it's very difficult, but I, I would just edge it to him. So it has yet to make it to the ground. Uh, both fighters feeling very good on their feet, throwing shots breaking the angles. However, like you said, I think on the stand-up, the most impressive thing is the kicks by Hardeman. However, Jess Butis has that weird uh, kind of drawing him in and then breaking it, as you said, jumping into the flying spinning, uh, flying knee spinning kick. Um, and if Hardeman isn't careful, he may get caught. Well, he gets you into a comfort zone. He gets you moving forward, walking him down. He allows it to happen. You're in total control. And then suddenly, he does explode forward nicely. As you said, sometimes with unorthodox stuff, now, the spinning heel kick, if it had landed, would have been a game changer. So he's still dangerous like that. And I think there'll come a time when Amir will tell Dale Hardiman, let's take it to the floor, let's see what he's got down there. Okay, guys, round two, ready, come on, let's go. So here we go, second potential three. I've just given that first round to Hardiman, but our judges may have seen that differently. Well, I'll tell you what, Jess Butis really tried to pour it on in the closing seconds of the first. Um, and a lot of referees, that's the last impression on their mind from the first round. Uh, some may have even scored that for Jess Butis. Yes, it is close, but another good low leg kick from Hardiman as he walks his man down. Now, Sim from. Sorry, go ahead. Similar now. pattern to the first PF. Yep. Superman punch there, just missing the mark. Now, what I would do on those leg kicks, as the leg kick comes, you follow that right in with those shots. You try to get him on the back step and beat him back before he's able to get it to a solid stance. That's right, the left leg to, to your opponent's lead leg, which is still the left, then follow through with your hands while he's off balance and still worrying about getting his feet back in position. Now, both fighters showing each other uh, a great deal of respect because this is a, a slower start than I expected. However, uh, it's been very technical as well. Oh, jumping knee from Dale Hardiman. So he's beginning to work variety into his techniques now as well. And that's where it works, Pierre, when you take that lead leg, follow through with the left hook. Now, you hear pa Paul Sutherland in the background saying, don't let him back you up. He's talking to Jazz Butis. Oh, takedown there by Jazz Butis. It was the cleanest takedown attempt, but it worked, Pierre. Elbow there from Hardeman. Have Jazz Butis in the guard of Hardeman. Now, Hardeman has an open guard. Um, look for him to try to crawl those legs up. The corner of Jazz Butis yelling, body, body, head, very up the punches. Yeah, as at the same time, Hardiman putting in those short little elbows to the head of Jasmutis. And those may not knock you out, but, you know, just a little cut.
could change the game mentally wise. You hear the referee yelling to improve the position. Again, leg crawls up from Hardeman. Very good off his back here and looking for the arm. He almost had the arm of just Brutus there. Now, how quick was that push off by Hardeman back to the feet and a takedown attempt by Hardeman? Beautiful Greco Roman takedown there by Hardeman, resulting with him in top position. Yes, the pace has certainly changed in this second round. And the tempo's moved up dramatically. And I must say, it's been in favor of Hardeman. However, Jasbuta staying very game, staying in it. No means is Hardeman walking away with this fight. Look for Jasbutis to post and possibly get back up. However, Hardeman is already getting the connection to take him right back down if that occurs. Front headlock. Now he right cranks his man. Even if he doesn't connect it. Ooh, and out the back door. <laughs> Missed opportunity by Hardeman. A very entertaining second round so far. Now we've seen that a couple times tonight, that rolling guillotine. Um, and I, I say that's a high-risk move because if you don't land it, a lot of times you pull the guy on top of you. And it's and happened again here. Yes, it has. In a round that, that Hardiman at the time was dominating, then Yasbutis really needs to maximize his fortune here. He needs to posture up, try to throw those short shots. He needs to do the little things. No time, the Pierre. Things. Mark Goddard's seen enough and brought them both up. Corner of Hardeman yelling a minute and 20 left. Now as Jess, uh, head kick there by Hardeman. As Jess, you just comes in for some of those shots. Um, Hardeman has been able to get uh, the beginnings of a tie clinch. However, Jess, you just pushing off. Yeah, he does that well. I said it. he moves nicely laterally to the side as well after he's thrown his shots. And as you saw there, he, you can tell that experience in him. I mean, he's had a lot of fights and he's, he's very strong. I said he's been in with the best and it does show. Now, Jazz Butis has Hardeman pushed up against the cage, trying to score points. Got to be careful about that low blow, however. Now, the thing I love about what Jazz Butis is doing now, he's got the high underhook, keeping Hardeman uh, from standing straight up, affecting his base. Hardeman tries to turn in reverse. And again, we just felt that one man was dominant in the round, and now Jazz Butis in the second half of this round has come back strongly. So this may not be a, a cut and dry decision as we're going into the third here, Pierre. I think really both men will really need to go for broke because this is not a foregone conclusion. I wouldn't want to be a judge on this one. And it seems to me that Jazz Butis has that internal clock. The last 30 seconds, his output and work rate goes through the roof, and he's been able possibly, uh, maybe in some of the referee, excuse me, some of the judges' minds, maybe to steal a round. Who knows? Again, I wouldn't want to be a, uh, a judge either. That's right, Pierre. You, as you know, judges look for a fighter to give them the reason to score the round to them. And if you are sitting on the fence and you are thinking, oh, I don't know, this one's going to a draw, then suddenly, as you said, someone explodes. It can make you forget the earlier parts that I think yep that's the guy I'm going with so you might be right this could be on paper an upset I think Hardiman to win it must really step on the gas this round and be totally dominant as we said the the guillotine attempt was a mistake that he's has proved costly yes Boutis I think really just keep going the way he's going you, as you said he's got that built-in time clock he knows when to pour it on and he is very unorthodox again spinning heel kick And the thing I like about Jazz Butis, he's, he's very twitchy. He's not flat-footed. Oh, spinning heel kick this time to the abdomen. Which I think is a far more effective tool. Um, it's, it's a bigger target, isn't it? It's a it? bigger target. It's, um, it's faster. You don't have to go so high, and it can cause real damage. Now, touch of gloves uh, again. A uh, little bit of uh, ooh, overhand right again. Swing while for fist now. That was not such a great setup for the shot too far in order to shoot. You know what, Pierre? I think that was testament to the power of the right hand. I think that one is the first one of the fight that got Hardeman's attention. Jumping kick by Jazz Butis. Jazz Butis, ever the entertainer, trying to let it all out here in the third. And it's got inside Hardeman's psyche, you know, there with that right hand and, the, the, as you said, the, the little gurning movements with the mouth and the face to put him off. It's worked. Now he's pressing, it was in the earlier rounds, 
uh, Hardeman being the aggressor, stalking his opponent down. However, Jess Butis is tight, trying to turn the table by stalking Hardeman here in the third. That's right, and it has had an effect, and this could be vital in this fight. Because for the first time, Hardeman looks hesitant. He's not as sure of himself as he's not walking his man down. And yes, Budis doesn't need an excuse to suddenly break that rhythm and storm forward. And at the moment, he's taken control of this third round. Stuffing the jab, though, is Hardeman onto Jazz Butis. Jazz Butis shakes it off back to that twitchy kind of... Oh, oh big left hand, and that rocked Hardeman. As he was on the turn, that left hand caught him. And, and you that hear the shook Jez, him up here. Yeah, and you hear the Jazz Butis uh, supporters in the crowd trying to cheer their man on to victory. Another long shot. Now, I don't know if this is from fatigue. Did that shot catch him and just alter his, you know, his game plan? Well, he's been, I think he's been caught by two hard punches, and it has shook him up. Now, this is something that you don't want to see as a coach. You don't want to see your man on his back with his hands behind the head because it shows that Jazz Butis is the aggressor, and he's scoring here. And again, when it's this close, Malcolm, you have to question yourself, who are the judges going to go with? Well, at the moment, if I was in the third, Jazz Butis has given me every reason to go with him. And those hands are causing problems for Hardeman now. They're short chopping punches. And whereas Hardeman was emphasizing the kicks, now it's Jazz Butis changing the tables and throwing the leg kicks of his own and landing. And there's that kick again. This time it lands under the arm of Hardeman. And Hardeman shots on. Oh, and he lands across the. Yes, Beauty is an economical kicker. He doesn't need much backlift. It just comes up. He's flexible. It's strong. And it is reaping benefits now. Now Hardeman is showing signs of fatigue, he's pushing the shots out, they're not coming out with that zip, that snap that he was showing earlier in the first. Yes, this has been, for me, a big, big round for Yasbutis. He's been confident, he's been mobile, and his, his shots have landed, and I think at least two occasions, he's actually hurt Dale Hardeman in this round. So for me, it all depends how the judges score those opening two rounds, because this one is not hard to score. This is a Yasbutis round, full stop. For me, if I'm in the, each of, uh, of the fighters' corners, I'm going to be holding my breath as the MC reads out the judge's decision, because like right now, uh, it could go either way. But clearly, a Yasbutis round here in the third. He's saying about the eye again <laughs> to Hardeman, saying, hey, hey, let's leave that out now. And again, there's where he's effective, exploding, breaking the rhythm, luring you on, and that right hand lands again. Now, did you, did you see what I noticed? He paused the hand down, he paused that lead hand down to come up and over the top with his shots, and it's working for him. And look, he's got the pep in his step. He's doing a little shake and shuffle here. And again, suddenly, the dynamic has changed. He's taking center ring or center cage, he's confident. But as we've seen many times, don't blink because the fight could change hands with a huge shot or a takedown. Oh, and just the strength of Jazz Butis there. To me, Pierre, that seals this round. It's now both coaches have to, to think how did those first two rounds go because they're key now. This third was clearly Jazz Butis. And I think he might have had enough of a shout to take at least one of the others. So I'm going to go off the fence and I have a feeling it's going to go to Jazz Butis. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. After three five-minute rounds of MMA action, we go to our judges at ringside for their decision. Judge Salim Mahmood has the contest 29-28. Andy Roberts at ringside has the contest 29-28. And Judge Ashley Grimshaw has the contest 29-28. All three in favor of our winner. From the blue corner, Dale Hurricane Hardiman. And ladies and gentlemen, 
A round of applause, please, for our gallant runner-up of that bout from Lithuania, Antanas Jasbutis.